Welcome to Kicking It with Sensei, and today we're joined by best-selling author, Lawrence A. Kane. You're very welcome, Lawrence. Thank you. And uh, if you'd just like to give the audience a little bit of background into your martial arts and how you kind of got started in the martial arts. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I started like a lot of a lot of folks do as a kid. I got bullied, and my dad said, uh, "Lawrence, meet Sensei Yamada, and he's gonna make it so you don't get bullied anymore." And uh, I was six, and uh, kept doing it for forty eight years. So, kind of enjoyed it. Uh, I've done just a, a, a huge variety of different martial arts. Um, that was judo that I started in. Uh, but I've done everything from uh, uh, traditional Okinawan karate, kabuto, um, European uh, sword and shield stuff, uh, Japanese fencing, and and uh, you know kendo, uh, aedo, uh, Philippine uh, escrima and arnis, um, uh, modern close quarter combat stuff, anything out to about two hundred meters. So, just a massive eclectic variety of stuff, of which if I you know, stuck with any one of them, I'd probably be really good at it, but, yeah. um, <laughs> but I got a pretty well-rounded, uh, uh, a view of everything. And you've wrote countless books on martial arts and, um, a lot of them you've co-authored with Chris Wilder, but how did you first meet Chris? Where did these first cross paths? Uh, Chris was my, uh, first, I'll call him real karate instructor. I actually had a, a couple of classes, um, for example, in, in college, there was a guy who taught karate at the, at the student center and it was just bad. So I'd been, uh, I've been doing a variety of stuff. Uh, I actually kind of wandered into a YMCA and saw this dude in a gi and went, Oh, that looks like fun. And, um, ended up, uh, uh, I think probably, gosh, I don't even remember how long we've known each other. It's been 28 years or something like that 29 years so it's been a long time and the reason we're on the show today was to talk about the new book so um the martial arts in your life and i know i was part of the survey now you surveyed a lot of martial artists from around the world but where did the idea for this book first come from you know it's kind of funny because uh chris and i over the years had many conversations about um Oh well, martial arts are different, or oh, martial arts are spe martial artists are special, or you know something along the lines of, you know, something happened. Somebody, one of our students or our friends, uh, dealt with it, and the result was well, yeah, of course. And so somewhere along the line, we went, you know, somebody has to have gone and, and gotten some evidence of how and why and, and in what ways martial artists are different. And it turns out nobody had. And so we went, well, okay, uh, we'll do it. Yeah. And so the, the um, it, it was an interesting challenge. First one was coming up with the right questions to test some hypotheses we had to get the information we needed, you know, that was in depth enough people would actually do it, um, but not so in depth, you know, that, that, that it'd be overwhelming. Uh, coming up with the order of the questions so it wasn't leading the witness too much, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, uh, <laughs> one of the ways in which martial artists are different is they don't follow directions very well. So herding all those cats and getting all the responses back in and occasionally reaching back out to folks and saying, hey, um, like, I don't know what you meant by that. Tell me more or whatever. And so it was a, it was a massive effort, um, especially because we're, you know, we're talking to folks all around the world, but uh, I think both of us were just really pleased by what we learned in the process. It was, it was far more uh, interesting than actually expected. And, and some of the theses or, you know, hypotheses we had in our thesis going in, were absolutely right on and some were completely wrong and it was just uh it's really illuminating i i i always enjoy writing books because i learn a lot by doing the research in this case just hearing stories from people all around the world seeing what their answers were um it was just fascinating i love some of the questions too particularly the one about have you ever spent a night in jail that was very interesting what was the the reason behind that particular question 
So that question was, the, the theory is that martial artists study violence and in doing so, actually learn about the consequences, therefore don't do it as much. So the idea is that by learning how to be violent, we are actually less violent and we wanted to test that. And, uh, and as it turns out, it's actually uh, martial artists are incarcerated about half the rate of the general population. And in fact, um, if you look at uh, overlay that little developmental psychology and, and, um, you know, how kids learn and, and all that sort of thing, it actually turns out that martial arts are a great way, if you have kids to keep your kids from going off on the wrong path. Excellent. And is there anything that you find out that um... Martial, all, all martial artists have in common or any like similarities that you've noticed? Well, uh, I mean, it, it, there's never an all have something in common, right? But there are many things that martial artists have uh, that are more like each other than the rest of society as a whole. So things like, um, for example, a lot of people will look for their leisure time to do something relaxing. Maybe they want to go to the beach, hang out, you know, drink margaritas in the sun or whatever, right? Uh, and so one of the questions we had in there was, was, would you rather go to the beach or the mountains? Well, it turns out martial artists as a whole would rather go to the mountains. Well, think about what do you do in the mountains, right? It's more challenging. There's hiking, there's climbing, there's, you know, hunting, maybe fishing, um, you know, depending on, on where. Um, but it's a more challenging thing to do physically there are benefits from both being at the beach or being at the mountains right but it yeah. but martial artists in in their uh world view generally speaking um much more than the rest of society want to challenge themselves to improve and grow in some way so even on their downtime they're doing things that are more active and and more um difficult so that they're persevering through something and, and thereby becoming better. And so in this whole world where I see a lot of people just kind of, um, you know, loving to, to take it easy, relax, not do the hard things, the folks who, who, uh, who spend time in martial arts, you know, maybe not everybody when they first get started, but the ones who, who stick with it, they really like to challenge themselves and, and to learn and grow. And it's a very distinct difference. And you see it not just in like hobbies, you see it in job performance, you see it in all other, all kinds of other areas. So for example, you know, if you're a hiring, a uh, hiring manager and you want a rock star employee, but you find martial arts on someone's resume, uh, pretty good chance they're going to do a good job. Now they may not, may or may not be qualified for other reasons, but if you're just talking about attitude and, you know, perseverance and working through the hard stuff and solving, you know, problems and all that, um, that's something we're collectively very, very good at and, and better on average than the rest of society. And on the flip side, is there anything that's kind of shocked you that you've discovered about martial artists from doing your research? Um, well, quite a few things were not what we expected. And so uh, I don't know, I'd say shock necessarily, but, but an example is uh, brain type. So if you look at the, Myers-Briggs personality type indicator. There's a, you know, it's been around since before World War II. It's been very well tested and validated and a pretty meaningful way of understanding what people's predilections are. Like it doesn't tell you exactly you know, everything you're going to do, but it gives you a very good idea of this personality versus that personality and kind of what are they, what are they uh, inclined to do? And we were able to take the, the martial artists uh, in the survey and overlay their brain chemistry with that of the average of society. And it's markedly different, like, like almost shockingly different. Y you'd expect a normal distribution and we didn't get it. And so, you know, that does lead to some questions that, uh, you know, is it, is it um, the brain chemistry that's driving people interest in martial arts, which is also driving, say their desire to, you know, to achieve and grow and all that, probably this correlation there. But the one thing that, that I thought was really cool about it is it doesn't matter. We, we looked into people's somatotype, maybe mispronouncing that, but you know, basically your body type. Yeah. And, and what we concluded in all the data that kind of cut to the chase is that you can be a great martial artist irrespective of your physical ability as long as the mental desire is there. 
And so that kind of makes sense when you go back to the brain chemistry thing that the uh, that certain types of folks are more inclined towards martial arts. They're also the ones who can, you know, despite not necessarily being the best athletes, can ultimately achieve as well in the martial arts. And that's I thought that was pretty cool. So, you know, there's some sports that if you're just not the right body type, you're not going to be good at it. You know, you can't play basketball if you aren't tall. Um, yeah. very few exceptions. I mean, there, I think there was a pro basketball player who was like five foot six, but that's really, really rare. Right. Um, yeah. and you know, same thing with like, you want to be a, a alignment in American football, you need to be a big stocky dude. Right. Um, in martial arts, you can be anybody and you can still do good. And that, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. And have you any more books in planning at the moment or as what's next for yourself? um in terms of books i don't know um we did we just got this one in fact I'm, I'm supposed to be getting the author copies today so i can uh can start you know signing stuff and sending them out so um we haven't quite wound down from this one it's just too new but uh what we do is chris and i do uh kind of a like a hollywood pitch session so usually he's the idea guy but not always and so he'll come in and go hey what do you think of this and i'll you know we'll banter back and forth a little bit and in you know probably half an hour we end up okay this is the next project so uh i expect we'll be doing that shortly i just don't know what it is yet no problem and you've done a lot of books with chris now what's the chemistry like between the two he's working together and these both have specific jobs that these fall into each time or yeah, it was one of those things. Um, it's kind of funny. So, so this all started when a year before my black belt test, Chris said, "Okay, you're going to test in a year, and I want you to write a thesis and bring it to the test." And I went, "Oh, okay, wow, um, a year thesis." Okay, so I show up on test day, and I've got this 140 page massive document. And he's like, "Dude, what the hell is this?" And I'm like, uh, "The thesis you asked for? Like, you know, I've spent the last year writing this thing," and he's like. Oh, I, I meant like a research paper, like eight or 10 pages. I, oh, wow. Okay. Well, um, fine. I'll, you know, I'll deal with that after the test. So uh, about a month later, when he finally got a chance to run, you know, to read through it, he's like, wow, this is a really good. You got to get this published. And I'm like, well, how do I do that? And he was, I don't know, go figure it out. So I did. And uh, that was my first book. And uh, it was also my worst written book. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, the first is usually that way. But uh, about, I don't know, uh, six, eight months, something like that, after that first book had come out, the publisher called me up and said, hey, what's your next book going to be? I'm like, next book? I, I never planned to write a first one. Well, Chris had been teaching, uh, this is you know way back 20-something years ago, he'd been teaching uh, a lot about the practical application of kata, and the only other person out there who was doing anything along those lines was Ian Abernathy. And so uh, I went to Chris and said, hey, I've got all these notes about what does kata mean? How does it work? Things like that. And I think it'd make a great book. I think it's something that's really missing in, in the field, but I don't feel competent to write it myself. Uh, I just, I've just, you know, I'm, I'm a show don. I don't, I don't know enough. Yeah. And he's like, well, okay. Um, you know, maybe we can, uh, maybe we can write this thing together. And we did. And that's what turned into the way of kata, which was a massive bestseller. And, um, in fact, I just got a note yesterday from a guy in Germany asking a question about it. Uh, it it's well known all over the world. Um, you get folks like like Patrick McCarthy glowing about it and, and things like that. Uh, and you know, when Hanshi says, "Hey, you, you did good," um, I'm like, "Wow!" Uh, you know, it, it's um, it was really great. And what we found in writing that was that we complement each other well. He's he's really good at ideas, big picture, you know, kind of explaining stuff. I'm really good at kind of the operational, um, you know, make sure that that's, that that's well understandable to everybody, you know, the editing layout uh, in terms of, of like the, you know, how, what the order of the book needs to be, that sort of thing. I mean, we hire, you know, editors and stuff like that. But, but the point is that, that we're pretty complementary in terms of the writing. And because... 
it's all about trying to produce quality work and there's no ego in it. It's really easy to go back and forth and say, hey, I don't know about this thing or tell me more about that. What did you mean or whatever? And it's kind of been a, you know, those kind of one plus one equals seven sort of deals, right? Where yeah. the, the sum of the two of us writing together is far better than either one of us independently, which is why we've written so many books together. I, I find, um, uh, you know, we've, we've done a few, you know, one-offs of our own, but I find that when we, when we come together and, and work, it, it really pulls out a lot more uh, value in the ultimate, you know, conclusion of it, because it's just not just my idea, it's our, you know, collective idea and bouncing stuff off each other. Excellent. And the new book now I love, now I've done a podcast for nearly two years and I've had a lot of the martial artists that were surveyed on the book, I've had them on the podcast, but I've found a lot that haven't been really known to me or I'm sure not known to a lot of people. And it's great to find out these martial artists and find their stories. And the one that stood out to me was Martin Stark from uh, Australia. And yeah. uh, it's it's really giving you a who's who of the martial artists as well in there. It's, there's a lot to the book. But, uh, yeah, Martin is fantastic. Um, I actually got to meet him. Well, I've never actually physically met him, but um, uh, yeah, I, 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 we're, we're both in the same industry in our professional world. Um, yeah. He used to do uh, street sourcing and procurement, which is what I do for a living. And um, we actually connected through LinkedIn. I found out about his story. I'm like, wow, this is, this is a cool dude. Um, you know, I want to, I want to get to know him a bit. And we, you know, we've talked like Zoom meetings and stuff. Uh, someday, if I can ever get to Australia, I actually want to meet him in person um, and uh, go have coffee or something. But, but uh, yeah, his story is just fascinating. And you know, this is a guy who, who uh, short. I'll let folks read it. But uh, short version is he just about died and used boxing, which is you know one of many martial arts out there, to kind of rebuild and remake himself after the fact and to kind of get work past all of that. Um, you know, kind of trauma and and be able to heal and and to grow. And, it, you know, kind of goes back to that whole martial artists like to challenge themselves thing. And we got a lot of stories like that. I mean, there, there's folks who have overcome rape, who've overcome, uh, you know, deadly diseases, uh, all kinds of stuff like that, who, who participate in the book, some of which were highlighted, some of which are, are just in the, in the detail behind all the answers. And, yeah. Uh, I really, uh, I find his story quite fascinating. I've actually uh, donated to his foundation. And um, uh, yeah, it's, I, I think folks, when, when they, one of the things we wanted to be really careful about was we're gathering a bunch of data and we don't want like a data wonk book. We want a book that's actually fun to read. Yeah. And so while we, uh, while we do the answer to each of the questions and what does it mean? How can you use it? We also intersperse in between each one of those the highlight of one of the martial artists who contributed who are really interesting and we didn't do it based on who they were we did it based on their answers with actually taking their names off so we could just pick the best answers and so there's you know folks who, who are actually hall of fame martial artists who didn't get highlighted because their answers weren't as interesting as other folks uh who were mm -hmm. but uh but that's actually how we chose who to highlight was uh, uh literally going through and finding the most interesting uh, answers to some questions. And the ones, the ones we highlight, we're not, you know, doing all 40 of their answers. We're just doing, you know, a, a little sampling, but it's the most interesting stuff. And so Martin was one of the ones that stood out as, as being, uh, just having a great story and something that folks can learn from. And how did he go about sourcing the martial artists to survey? Um, we, well, so, uh, Chris has, you know, a ton of connections. I have some connections, you know, both from being an author as well as being a martial artist. And so we, we basically reached out to everybody we could find uh, who is who might be interested and, and gave folks a chance to respond uh, either anonymously or with their name on it. Uh, thankfully, almost everybody was willing to put their name on it because I think it's better that way. It also allowed us to do follow-ups if we needed to. And so we just uh, we basically reached out to uh, anybody who could who could read and write English because um, you know that we only do one language, <laughs> but everywhere in the world and try to get representation from you know at least every continent and from uh, you know from most different types of martial arts 
uh, you know, there's some demographic information in the back where we were um, pretty successful in terms of this, of, you know, really getting the, the holistic view of the marketplace, not exactly in line with, with, you know, the popularity of the arts, but pretty close and uh, also pretty close across uh, uh, gender as well. The, the um, there's a lot less women in martial arts than there are men. Yeah. And they don't keep the records of folks who are non-binary, so I, I can't answer that part. But, but in terms of being able to identify, um, you know, do we have a really good representation of the larger marketplace of of folks who participate? I think we do a pretty good job. Definitely. Yeah. And finally, where can people find the book and get a copy? Well, uh, you can get anything on Amazon, just about. <laughs> so that's the easiest way to do it. Um, there, it's available in hardcover, softcover, and ebook. There may be an audiobook coming at some point. Uh, typically, if something sells well enough, we'll do the audiobooks. It takes a really long time yeah. to, to do. Um, sometimes we hire voice actors, and sometimes Chris does it. So uh, that may be coming, but uh, uh, Amazon of any flavor. Uh, Amazon, you know, UK, Amazon.com, whatever, uh, you can find it uh, available. One thing I have noticed, uh, I don't know why, but the, the paperbacks ship quickly. The hardbacks are really slow to ship for some reason. So hopefully people will, uh, you know, that want the hardback will will um, not mind waiting a bit because I, I actually like the hardcover one better, but yeah. for some reason they're shipping really slow. I think it's just the supply chain challenges we've got going on right now. I don't think I got the hard the hard back myself, and I think from the US to Ireland it only took about ten days, which is sh shockingly fast. But <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Uh, I, I know other folks. Uh, somebody wrote me a note said that he he'd ordered it uh, was March like fourth or something, or mm -hmm. I think it was the fourth, and today's the twenty fourth, and he hasn't got it yet. So. Yeah. Um, so I guess you got lucky. I got lucky. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, hopefully it's worth the wait for those who uh, who want to go that route. Uh, I I think it's pretty cool that um, that there's multiple you know versions of it available. I I personally uh, all my kind of fluff reading, you know, the the stuff that's just entertainment, I get on a Kindle because I don't want to have this massive stack of books I don't know what to do with. But anything I really want to keep, I prefer a hardcover, and if I can't, then I'll get a soft cover. Good. And it was a pleasure having you on, Lawrence, and thanks very much for joining us today. And Thank you, Sensei. I appreciate okay. it. It's, uh, it's always fun to talk about this stuff. As yeah. you can tell, I, uh, I enjoy it. So Definitely. And I'll put a link to the Amazon on the description of the video here. And thanks very much and all the best with the, with the book. Thank you. Again. Appreciate it. Okay.